Well, hi, Timberline family. It is Pastor Jeff here. It is 9 a.m. in Colorado, and uh, I'm coming to you all the way from England, where it is 4 p.m., and of course, 4 p.m., 4 in the afternoon, is tea time. And so welcome to this very first edition of uh, Tea with Jeff and occasionally Kay. And I'm delighted to tell you that Kay will certainly be joining me today. Well, I know... Um, that it's a sunny day in Colorado there. It's uh, sunny, uh, expected highs of 80 degrees. I've always wanted to be a weather forecaster. And uh, here it is rainy and windy with a high of 57. So we rejoice with you in the glorious weather that you are experiencing in Colorado. Commiserate with us um, as we navigate through a high of um, 57. Um, now, as you can see, um, my hair is reaching to the heavens. Kay is offering to cut my hair, uh, and I'm, I'm open and willing for that to happen, um, but the anaesthetic has not arrived in the mail yet. So I can already see uh, people jumping in. Carla, good morning to you, and uh, Karen, and Terry, and Brian, and uh, John DeAnders there. And uh, Karen is uh, Karen Bauer was just saying that she's there dreaming of falafel. Now, what is that all about? Well, uh, Kay and I should, together with Karen, we should have been leading uh, at our trip to London and the Holy Land. We should have been in Israel right now, but of course, because of the present conditions in which we find ourselves, um, that's not currently happening. Charlie joins us, and he's been on one of those. Uh, trips too and Jeff is here and he says I need a Larry fix. Larry is the guy who uh, a dear friend who who cuts my hair and and what a task he has trying to shape this shrinking peninsula into something reasonable and uh, Margaret's there good to see you too Margaret and she says it's been a while Dave Goldfain is doing a great job with us at Timberline uh, greetings to you as well now I mentioned earlier uh, that it's four o'clock and and our plan is that um, Thursdays at 9 a.m. Colorado time as it is right now don't want to create any confusion we'll be having these live broadcasts and the idea is to have a bit of fun and uh, catch up with each other and uh, also I'll read you one of my stories as well 15 20 minutes not an exact time um, and um, it's going to be some fun. Now listen, I know that this is a very serious time in our world and there's, um, there are a lot of very real challenges that we're facing and in wanting to have a little bit of fun, I'm not in any way minimizing the very real challenges that we're facing. But let me also say, I think it's important that we laugh and we smile and we celebrate and uh, we are continuing to be together. What a fantastic resource we have um, with the uh, internet and with these resources to be able to stay connected. I mean, think about this. We are, we are millions of miles away from you right now in England, actually about 4,768. Uh, and yet now, right now, we've got 54 people live online. Ryan has just joined us. Cindy's there and she says she needs a Larry fix, a hairdressing fix as well. And, uh, and others will join the broadcast and many of the other resources, of course, that we've got there on the Timberline Facebook page and on the Timberline website. Loads of resources to help us stay connected. Hey, listen, we can be church. Not only we can be church, but we can flourish as church, even in these, <clears throat> excuse me, challenging conditions. Now, it's a cup of tea with Pastor Jeff and occasionally Kay. And so um, what we're gonna do now is I'm, I'm gonna go through uh, to the kitchen where Kay is waiting to greet us. And um, we're going to uh, think about what it takes to get the perfect um, cup of tea. Uh, now, I need you to know that very often Kay and I don't drink tea when we're in America, because often it's quite lukewarm. Hi Dawn and Angie and Holly and, and uh, Misty and Ryan. Um, we don't drink tea when we go out to eat in America because it's often quite lukewarm and sometimes they bring it out in a rather strange bottle that looks like they picked it up cheap at the hospital. Carla is drinking coffee. She says, is that permitted? It is fine, Carla. We are willing to accept that 
Ice tea is a different story, but we won't discuss that right now. So uh, I'm going to turn this around because it doesn't give me the facility to reverse this for some reason. And here's Kay, and if you can see yourself, Kay, then you are on camera. I can see myself. Hello, everybody. Hello, Timberline family and friends. I'm going to show you how to make an English cup of tea. Before you do that, I've just got to say, darling, you're looking rather colourful today. Well, thank you. Rather springtime. Well, it is spring, even though we've got spring rain today. It has been glorious weather here in England, I have to say. So, let's get back to that cup of tea. So, very importantly, you need a teapot. And here in England, if you go out for tea, you will have your tea served in a china teapot. Any particular scientific reason for the china? Well, I believe the royal family always use it, so it's a good reason for us to use it. Not terribly scientific, but it works for Never me. Mind. Okay. So, what we do need to do, and this is very key, is you need to warm your teapot first. That is very important. And, of course, we would be using loose tea, not tea bags, although I have to confess, we do use those too. Don't tell them that. Anyway, so we pop our tea into the teapot and we use a kettle to boil the water. Now that is very important also. We need it to be piping hot boiling water. I know some folks like to use the microwave to heat their water, but... Mm -mm. It's wrong, isn't it? Yes, not an English way of making a cup of tea. So boiling water in your kettle, fill your teapot, and we let it brew... Or steep, or we call it. Steep for yeah. about three minutes, and we put the tea cosy on top. Purpose of that is to keep it warm. And then when we come to pour our tea in our china teacup, we use milk. We do not use cream or half and half, but well, that doesn't even exist here in England. So we use milk. And it's always right to put the milk in first. And we will need a tea strainer because we're using loose tea. And there's nothing worse than having tea floating around in your cup. It's horrible. It is terrible. And of course, we need to mention, we also have a thing called cream tea, which we can explain a bit later. But I'd like to give a shout out. I heard Karen Bauer was on. I don't know if uh, Beth and Don from Windsor are on, but they love cream teas. Anyway, back to our teapots. Now, I did make ours a little earlier so that it will be the right colour. And we've got the milk in the cup, so now we pour our tea through the tea strainer for our perfect cup of English tea. And if you have a sweet tooth, then you can add sugar, one lump or two. What about the, um, what about the cookies? What? Oh no, they're not cookies, they are biscuits. We don't have cookies in England. We have biscuits, and these are shortbread. They have uh, white chocolate and raspberry in them as well. Rather delicious from our farm shop. Uh, isn't it true to say, darling, that these uh, cookies uh, contain about 11 million calories, um, but we felt compelled to eat them as part of our sacrificial service to the Timberline community? And as we eat them, we're going to be thinking of you all. Shall I mention what a cream tea is? Yeah. So a cream tea would be your lovely cup of tea, served with a scone, or scone as you might like to say. They can be fruit or they can be plain. And they're served warm with butter, jam and clotted cream, which is the most delicious cream you will ever taste in all your life. But it's quite bad for the heart. So you don't want to have too much of it. You get a coupon for the emergency room when you buy it, don't you? The big question is, do you put the jam on first or the clotted cream? I don't Something know. Something for you to ponder. Well, there you are then, uh, how to make the perfect cup of tea. And uh, uh, I'm already seeing Cindy saying shortbread, absolutely yum. Heather, this is making your heart happy. That is really good. Uh, Tracy said it looks absolutely delicious. Cindy loves scones. The question is, is it scones or scones? We will ponder these deep issues. And uh, Courtney says, Kay, that you could start a, uh, a food network show, that it was a great demo. And uh, Tracy's uh, saying, wish we could get clotted cream in America. Maybe that's a, a future business opportunity. 81 of us, uh, 81 of you joining us right now live. And Carla is thanking us for the sacrifice in eating those biscuits. And you know what, Carla? There are some things that 
We're just willing to do. We just ponder the price and embrace the sacrifice. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, uh, I'm going to uh, read to you now uh, a, a piece which I hope um, you'll enjoy. I, I did pre-advertise and say that uh, I was going to reveal some scandalous or reveal some truth. It was not scandalous about Pastor Dick Foth, and I know that Dick is is currently watching. By the way, the kitchen in Fort Collins, K, uh, I'm just hearing from Shannon that they, I believe, sell clotted cream. Is that true, Shannon? And um, uh, so, apparently, uh, that is the case. Debs is saying, can't believe that I said the word cookie and would love a nice Kentish cream tea right now. And Shannon, thanks for your kind words. And World Market may have clotted cream. All kinds of uh, shopping advice that's um, coming in right here. Okay, well, here's a piece that I wrote a, a couple of years ago. And uh, it's called Everyone Needs Someone to Sing the Bass Line. So here we go. It was one of those faintly ridiculous and mildly hilarious Christian gatherings which always seemed to cheer me up no end. As Timberline members know, Timberline family members know, I spend a lot of time in Christian services, meetings, and then beyond that, conferences, retreats, and celebrations. And I was particularly enjoying that service that I was in, not least because I had absolutely no responsibility in it. I spend my life waiting for the nod that signals that it's time for me to preach, which means that, just to be honest, let you, to let you know this, Sometimes I can rarely enjoy singing in worship simply because my mind is jumping around thinking about what I'm about to say and invariably fiddling with my iPad, making last minute adjustments before delivering the message. And then when I am the one bringing the sermon, there's a consistent arrangement that I do have to live with. The fact that I always have to listen to me. No comments, please. I've listened to myself leathering on quite a few times over the years and I'm occasionally tempted to tell myself to be quiet, although that would be rather odd. But at this particular service, I was looking forward to the luxury of listening to somebody else preach. The worship leader, who was apparently nine years old, I exaggerate, but he did seem impossibly young, was leading a rather lilting song, but he'd chosen the wrong key to start it off in. I knew this because all the men were trying to sing in a lower octave, but it was just too deep for most of us, which meant that there were moments in the song where we had to switch and go up into falsetto mode. The result was the sound of a notational symphony, cacophony more like, where the men alternated between gruff off-key bass tones and high-pitched squealing. If any passing angels had noise-cancelling headsets built into their halos, they were certainly using them now. The worship song had at least 58 verses, actually six, but that's how it felt, and I was trying very hard to not laugh out loud. When things go wrong during services, leaders often notice people watching them to see what their reaction is. I so wanted to laugh out loud, but that would have not been appropriate, so I busied myself with the thought pattern that I use when wanting to not giggle. I thought of painful death and public shame and then resorted to my old standby, which involves me thinking about being eaten alive by marching armies of Honduran fire ants. That took the smile off my face. The service was difficult and I was quite glad when it ended. But thinking about memorable services, that brings me to one that I experienced one time actually at Timberline. I was singing along with the worship and it was then that I heard a voice behind me, a deep resonant voice, manfully belting out the lower bass line of the song. It was my friend, and I'm sure yours, Dick Foth. I decided to take a break from singing myself and just listen to him. He does have quite a nice voice. He's not gonna fill any concert halls, sorry, Pastor Dick, but the man can sing. Pastor Dick's speaking voice is rather brilliant too. A one-time radio presenter he has the perfect vocal timbre and texture for that medium. I've been told that when it comes to radio, I have the perfect face for that. Again, no comments needed, thank you. 
But as I tuned into both, a realisation dawned that sparked immediate gratitude. Pastor Dick has been a baseline in my life, strong, solid and substantial. His friendship, together with that of Ruth, has undergirded my faith and helped keep the rhythm going for quite some time. I first met Pastor Dick 30 years ago. A new immigrant to America, I was feeling homesick and bewildered, not so much by the culture, but by the church where I served as an associate pastor. Everything was so different from church life in the UK. Not wrong, just different. I was suffering from suffocating homesickness, wondering whether it was time for me and for our family to return back to the UK. And then I went off to a men's weekend retreat. I wasn't feeling hopeful because the place was filled with chaps sporting massive beards who wore baseball caps and check flannel shirts. It looked like a lumberjack convention. I didn't have a flannel shirt. All hats perch on my head in a way that looks awkward. And last time I tried to grow a beard, my face resembled a rabbit's rear end. Can't believe I said that. When I opened my mouth to speak, my British accent gave me away, and so now I was the novelty item, a beardless, flannelless, capless, hapless foreigner. Booking homeward flights seemed like a very sensible thing to do. Until the speaker for that weekend stood up, that is. It was Pastor Dick Boat. He had an endless supply of fascinating stories. He didn't seem to think that God was irritated with us all on a continual basis, on the contrary, when he talked, I felt like God was really rather delighted to know me and us. I can't remember a thing he preached about. People often say that of preaching and preachers, which is just so very encouraging. But there was something about him that thawed the spiritual chill that had crept into my soul and warmed my heart towards being in America again. And so I and we decided to stay. That was the last time I saw Pastor Dick Foth until I was asked to speak at Bethany Bible College in California, where Dick was then serving as president. As chapel speaker, it was my privilege to have dinner with the president. Dick was wrestling with a migraine, so the dinner was probably a chore for him. Probably wasn't a chore for him whether he had a migraine or not, but I was thrilled. And then, some years later, as we all know, Pastor Dick decided to relocate to Fort Collins and be part of Timberline Church our church. We all know, don't we, that he and Ruth continue to make a significant contribution to the life of our church, not least, I might add, with the sharing of that brilliant message just a few days ago. And so Pastor Dick Foth, my baseline singing friend, is a regular part of my and our lives now. And over breakfast recently with Dick and Ruth, I somewhat tearfully told him about this piece that I was writing and that I'm sharing now. So, thanks for singing the bass line for me, Dick. Thanks for keeping or helping keep him in tune, Ruth. Please both keep singing along with me and with us for many, many years to come. Well, there you go. There's the, uh, there's the news from Pastor Dick both. And uh, as you can see, and let me know if you're in time, okay? Um, it is time now for us to enjoy our cup of tea and um, Timberline family, uh, just for you, I feel it's appropriate. Um, I wish you were here to share these cookies, although right now, how many, look at the top corner, honey, how many people are actually tuned in right now? 68. We got 68 and there are only six cookies um, available. And so uh, here's what we're going to just have to do. Uh, we can't send them over to you, but we will eat them on your behalf and be thinking about you. Thanks so much for joining me. It's been uh, 18 minutes. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. And we will be back together um, on uh, a week today on Thursday. Also looking forward to be sharing in coming weeks um, at the weekend again. Um, because of this amazing technology and, and thank, thanks to our amazing team there at Timberline, we're able to do all of this. Thank you for joining us. Just to say, uh, Charlotte is saying thank you and appreciate that. Andrea is going to have a donut with us. Well, it's not as good, um, but I'm sure 
uh, that's going to be um, wonderful. And uh, Christine was just saying thanks for sharing the story of Pastor Dick Foth and our friendship. Shannon is saying if she could find delicious scones, truly delicious scones and clotted cream out there, uh, you would eat them every day. And Larry Baker, dear Larry, my hairdresser and my friend is watching. And all I can say, Larry, is <laughs> I am so, so sorry. God bless you guys. Uh, great to be with you. Keep well. Stay safe. See you soon. Bye-bye.